Hey guys, hello and welcome to another episode of Star Wars Galaxy Versus, or at least that's what this series normally is if you've looked at the title for today's video, you know that there is no Star Wars at play here. That's because a couple of days ago, I received my most highly voted matchup of all time, and I just feel like I cannot ignore that. Before I get into today's matchup, I just want to give a brief thank you to Gawkbox. Gawkbox is a way for you guys to support me directly without having to spend your own money. You go on this site, you play games, and I get directly tipped. There's also a leaderboard, which is a whole lot of fun. You guys can see who's tipped me the most, although I will say, I don't think anyone will be able to be random guy because he's just super dedicated. So thank you Gawkbox for inviting me to your service. If you guys want to support the channel, help me make more videos for you guys and ignore my other important work, go to gawkbox.com slash Eckhart's Ladder. There'll be a link down in the description. I'll also probably post it in a comment. So today we're looking at a suggestion by Cat Pirate. And as I mentioned earlier, I believe that this is the most highly voted suggestion that you guys have ever put my way. And it makes sense because this is an intriguing one. Today we're looking at the Borg from the Star Trek universe and the Flood from the Halo universe, two universes which are featured pretty heavily on my channel. And I said this one is interesting, and I think it is. We've got two species here that are very unconventional, that rely on assimilation, and both also have some sort of central hive mind. If you guys like this matchup and are cool with the occasional non-Star Wars matchup on this channel, make sure to give this video a like, and let's aim for around 3,000 today. I'm going to run today's matchup in a pretty basic way. We're going to take a very quick look at both of these species, and then do a formal head-to-head, -head. and the head-to-head -head will actually have two rounds, but we'll get to that when we get there. Right now, let's start with a quick look at the Flood. The Flood, which are kind of a combination between a parasite and a zombie outbreak, are probably one of the most interesting and dangerous species in science fiction. The Flood are terribly, terribly infectious, and they're able to spread extremely quickly and seem to be effective against pretty much any organic being with sufficient biomass and intelligence. Not unlike the Borg, the Flood grow in strength as they accumulate more biomass. As they take over more beings, aside from just obviously creating more flood forms, they also gain more intelligence. As a flood infection grows in size, they'll form a proto-grave mine which will allow the flood to do some sophisticated tactical maneuvering and then they'll form a grave mind and eventually a key mind. And a key mind is an incredibly intelligent entity which can control the flood on a grand macro scale. The flood rely on sheer numbers even when a grave mind or a key mind is present. However, each individual flood is coordinated by this central power. So the more advanced the infection and thus the accumulation of biomass and the central intelligence becomes, the more deadly the individual flood forms become and they operate at a greater purpose. One advanced technique used by the flood once they've achieved a very powerful state is that of the logic plague. And a logic plague basically subverts artificial intelligence and causes it to work towards the flood goals. And we saw that the logic plague was very effective against certain Forerunner AI, which are certainly very, very advanced. Speaking of Forerunner, the flood dominated the ancient Halo universe to such an extent that the Forerunner built and utilized the Halo rings to destroy all life in the galaxy. The Flood's domination of the Forerunner and the Ancient Galaxy is very impressive. The Forerunner Empire was massive and very, very technologically advanced. The Forerunner routinely created megastructures like the Ark, Halo, the massive shield worlds that they made, and also had incredibly advanced AI. More than that, they also knew that the Flood was coming. I think it's fairly safe to say that the true power of the Flood depends heavily on the extent of their propagation as a species. However, luckily for them, when they encounter intelligent life, they propagate very, very quickly. Let's now talk about the Borg, and this one is going to be a little shorter than the Flood, just because much of what I've said about the Flood also applies to the Borg Empire. When the Borg encounters an individual or a species that they deem worthy, they utilize nanoprobes to infect that person, adding them to a Borg collective and turning them into a drone. All drones are connected by a central force, and at most times the Borg collective probably consisted of trillions, if not more, of drones. When the Borg assimilate a drone, they gain the use of their technology and their intelligence, and so far, they have assimilated thousands of species. The use of these nanoprobes is also present in other aspects of their technology, so for example, Borg ships are able to adapt extremely quickly to the weapons of other species, such that while the first couple of shots may be effective, after that, the shields will adapt and stop all damage. Like the Flood, 
When the Borg assimilate an individual, they also gain access to that person's knowledge, so each person that they assimilate adds to the greater collective's intelligence. I mentioned that they have assimilated thousands of species, but some, like species 8472, have been so biologically advanced that the Borg is unable to actually assimilate them. So now that we have a basic understanding of these two species, let's now look at the matchup. And as I said, because this one is kind of weird, we're gonna have two scenarios to try to make it fair for each side. The first scenario is a callback to Star Trek Voyager. Borg, in search of perfection and for further species to assimilate, have stumbled into a flood-infested Halo galaxy. Their goal here is basically to either assimilate the flood or defend themselves such that they could survive in the galaxy for as long as needed. In the second scenario, a flood-infested CCS-class Covenant battlecruiser has somehow managed to land in the Star Trek universe and in Borg space. For the flood to win this round, they have to be able to infect the Borg and to at least be on the path to devouring the entire species. So round one, the Borg have entered a heavily flood infested galaxy and the flood at this point would be at a very advanced stage, so thus extremely powerful and numerous. Because in this imaginary scenario, the flood has full control of the Halo galaxy, they would have numerous grave mines and key mines, and most likely they've already started determining ways to exit the galaxy and attempt to take over other ones. The Borg is in really big trouble here. The flood at this point is going to be almost immeasurably intelligent. They will have access to not only the Logic Plague, which I think should be effective against the technologically based species, but also precursor technology including Star Roads. Even should the Borg manage to assimilate some flood and add them to their collective, they won't be able to stand up to just the sheer number of enemy flood that they will have to take on. I mean, we're talking trillions of flood that will be reproducing. The thing about the Borg is that they won't be able to keep up with the Flood's expansion. They don't reproduce classically, instead relying on assimilation to add new members to the species. Based on the sheer amount of biomass they will have collected, the Flood will not only be very sophisticated, but very, very numerous. I mean, they could literally throw themselves at the Borg if they wanted to here. So I'm going to give Scenario 1 to the Flood. Now for Scenario 2. A Flood-controlled vessel has entered Borg space in the Star Trek universe. How does the Flood fare? In my mind, this scenario comes down to one central question. Will nanotechnology be effective against the Flood? If it is, I think things will go well for the Borg. I mean, we know that if an initial Flood infection is stopped, there is a chance to survive. I think the Borg will likely take every threat very seriously and react quickly and with force. Technology can also be used to combat the Flood. I mean, the Forerunner used advanced combat suits to protect themselves, and even Cortana used Master Chief's shield to stop a Flood infection form. If the Borg can use their nanoprobes to assimilate the Flood, they should be able to adapt to its biology, and that information should spread quickly throughout the Collective. Any information they learn should not only allow them to defend themselves, but perhaps they'll even gain some benefit from the Flood's very unique biology. The Borg, most likely, will still be killable with sheer force. You know, they seem to be weak against hand-to-hand -hand combat, but without a key mind or grave mind and without logic plague or sheer numbers, there's not much the Flood can do and they won't be able to further increase their biomass. This will lead to a win for the Borg. However, will the nanoprobes actually work? We've seen that species with advanced immune systems are able to, if not ignore, at least delay assimilation. I have no real scientific basis for this because what I'm talking about now is immeasurable, but I do see the Flood as basically being biologically perfect. If there's one species that could stand up to the nanoprobes of the Borg, I think that it would have to be the Flood. The Floods seem to be almost a godly force of nature. No cure for them has ever been developed, as you guys rightly pointed out in the comments for my last video featuring them, and they are created through corrupted precursors, an ultra powerful race in the Halo universe, a race that makes Forerunner look like babies. I just think the Flood are at least as biologically advanced as previous species that have shown a resistance to Borg technology. So in my mind, the Flood will be able to infect the Borg, they'll gain the intelligence that that brings with it, and at that point I think they will be basically unstoppable, as is the case when a serious Flood infection occurs. That, of course, is just one man's opinion. I would love to hear what you guys think. I'm not gonna have a poll for this video. I would like you guys to take it to the comments. Which species do you think is the more invasive, the more powerful, the more ultimate? Is it the Flood on one hand or the Borg on the other? Let me know, as I said, down in the comments. Also, as I mentioned earlier, let me know if you liked this video and if you did, make sure to drop a like so I know to keep making more that don't always involve the Star Wars universe. Although, this channel will also be primarily Star Wars focused. Of course, also, please 
please do not forget to leave your ideas for future videos, and if you see an idea that you like down in the comments, make sure to give it a big thumbs up and leave a supporting comment, because that is how, like today, I choose my future videos. Anyways, thank you so much guys for watching, this week has been crazy, the channel is growing very, very quickly, and I couldn't do a wink of it without the help of you guys, so thank you so much for watching, for sharing with your friends, and for doing everything that you guys do. I'll be back with a new video tomorrow, and until then, you guys can follow me on Twitter, join the Discord, do whatever else to keep up to date with the channel. Anyways, thanks again for watching one more time, guys, and hey, as always, may the Force be with you.